this video, we're going to look at style changes in Bubble. So, say, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Say there was a uh, buttons. I have my buttons in Bubble, and I want to go ahead and say, well, let's change the color of all my buttons, right? Um, I have different styles I could do for buttons. This is going to be the same for every one of these elements here, right? So I can go in and I can say edit style. So I can change what my primary style is. I could go ahead and say I want the color to be red or drag it around on this. Maybe I just want a lighter blue. Okay, now look, they're all lighter blue. What's important to remember with this is when we're editing styles, everything of that style is gonna change. We're never gonna change one button. We're changing what that button's dictated to look like. So if I wanted something to look different, I would wanna add a new style and I would wanna say this style name and then dictate what it's for. Let's say this one's for a button. And we want this button for some reason to be green. See how it didn't change immediately. All I did was create a style. I didn't actually assign a style. So now I have. So now this is going to operate differently than these in terms of color. Function doesn't change. All I did was change its color. Another way I can do that is to do conditional. So I could say when, what's this drop down color? When drop down color's value is. is not empty, this element background color, Let's make it hot pink. Let's also make the text say, let's go. And then we can also make it so we could change the text size, the text font, whatever we want to do. And these are things that are changeable for all of it. But um, let's just show you how, how this will function. So this is another way of changing how things look. See? So you can do too is with this, I could do, please, oops, please fill in boxes. boxes above. Please fill in boxes above. That'll fit a lot better. And then I could do conditional that when this is empty and when this is empty that, sorry, I could just do elements not clickable originally. And then when this is not empty and when drop down number value is not empty. And this is all gonna change. Also then need to make it clickable. So not having this checked means it is. So if checkbox isn't clickable, would check that would make it true. Unchecking it makes it not true. So I'll show you what that looks like because that changes how the whole box look operates. See? Cool. So then we're not even changing the style in it. We're changing the style inside the uh, inside the functions itself, which is one way to do it. So if I wanted to change like the style of this heading, I could edit heading six. I could then make it bold, italic, and underlined, and everywhere in my app is going to change like that. This one too, like say I went into this and did that again. Now everything on that is going to be done like that. What's cool with groups though is I always like to build with groups that have borders. So I like the solid border that it default defaults to. It helps me get an idea of how things are going to look. So like I have a box around this group, a box around this group. I have a box around this repeating group. And then I'll even go back to the... Uh, index here real quick there so when I build something like this I want to see these 
kind of boxes around them. I might even want one around my text. And uh, if, I have, if I put an image in, I definitely want a um, box around the image. This is just video, so it has like an actual thing that shows up. But I can easily go in and I can remove those boxes, the boxy lines around it at the end of building my app. And that's one way style can help you is you can look at style um, as a way to help you build the app and you can always change that. So like I can just go into the style and remove the border and see how much cleaner that looks. And all I did was change one setting. Now I can put that back in too. Oop, wrong button. I can easily just flip that back on, right? And that's easier for me to see. So sometimes when I'll show people, like this is the app I'm working on, I'll, I'll show it to them with the boxes around it and they're like, eh, it's kind of ugly. Okay, give me just a second and I go back, turn it up, turn the boxes off and then flip it back in. Um, but also if you have certain company colors that you wanna do, implementing that color scheme is really easy because a lot of it's just what are backgrounds gonna be, what are buttons gonna be. So I could say the background color for the page is gonna be, let's go with a light blue. So we're doing all blues for this company. And then I could even go in and say groups are all gonna have that same light blue. And if I wanted to make sure it was perfect, I'd grab this number and do it. I'll do it now to show you how to do it. So I'll copy that, because they're gonna look a little bit off here. Oh wow, I actually did it really close. Come on, work. Oh, it's because there's two. There we go. Yeah, if you have two of the hashed tags there, or pound signs, however old you are that you would like to describe them. That will work, but simple ways to adjust things. And you can do the same thing for other things inside of the, the app. Um, biggest ones are gonna be groups, buttons, and text for adjusting those settings. I don't know a lot of people that use like shape um, Icons are all gonna be individual based on what you actually put in. So you can change the style there for color though on the icon. So look, if I was gonna make icons, the standard icon is going to be blue. But if I wanted to have red icons, I would wanna make an element style for icons, okay? And I would want to be red. Right. And you see, I still have this icon selected. I would want to change this to red icons and that would make it red. Just some simple ways to adjust style pretty easily in your app. Um, again, I think that the best way to do um, building is to keep these solid lines on and to, oops. Ha, I see why it didn't make, why it didn't make sense earlier. There we go, let me copy this real quick. I wanted the background to be the flat color. And I changed the back, the, uh, I changed the color of the solid lines, which I want to be black so I can see them. And I wanted the flat background color of the, there we go. What I did there was made these lines, these lines were blue, and since there was no background color, it was just showing me what was behind it, which is why even though they were different colors, it looked like they were the same colors, and I made an oopsie. Sorry about that. But easy fix, you wanna change it to flat color. You can do gradient, you can even implant an image. I wouldn't do a background image in groups for the most part, unless you've got some major reason to really want to in an app. I don't like gradient, because gradient looks like you're building a website from the 90s where you're trying to look fancy for no reason. Then, um, yeah, always be sure to check where you're actually changing colors and things with multiple attributes. Like and subscribe. Have a great day.